And so now we have um, the, a good system. By the way, there's more built in here. The notion here is that once we've got insight, then what's the optimal pathway for development? And because this is built on a lot of the largest frameworks in leadership, there's an optimal path for development built right into it. So let's just talk about uh, Jack for a minute. Jack's issue is high control and at the expense of relationship. So mostly we, we would, what we would prescribe would be, let's take Jack and send him to charm school, right? Turn him into a touchy-feely type. This is the path of most resistance for Jack. It's like nails on a chalkboard. I mean, he can't stand that stuff. He's wired for results. So let's have a results conversation with Jack. Let's take his core gift, which is the drive for results, and move it from reactive to creative. Move it from reduce his controlling and turn it into more high achieving. Then he's focused on purpose, vision, and building coalitions of alignment to get results. That's a conversation he actually is interested in. And it turns out that if we can do that, his profile fills in really nicely. He will learn how to relate in service of vision and results. The same is true with Bob. Bob's issue is he gives too, away too much power. He's a people person. He cares about people, but he gives away too much power. So if we can bring power into his relationships, take his core gift and empower it, then he becomes much better at his relationships. And it turns out if he does that, he, he advocates for the stuff that he really cares about, and he's getting results. And his profile fills in very nicely. And so that's the system. It gets both competency and uh, consciousness at the same time. 